It's the Michigan Football Report here on a Monday, day one of spring practice. It's a new beginning for this new 2022 football team. Let's make it a new beginning for you if you've never subscribed to the show. If you're not subscribed now, go ahead and subscribe. We're sitting at 19,412 subscribers, by far away the most for any YouTube channel covering this football program. Be part of the nearly 20,000 Michigan football fans who subscribe to this channel. We're going to talk all about spring practice, give you my depth charts and top five storylines, the news and rumors you need to know about Jim Harbaugh's Big Ten champion Wolverines. All coming up right now. We are presented by Manscaped, who just launched their ultra, ultra premium collection. Go check it out, manscaped.com. Use promo code GOBLUE for 20% off and free shipping. All right, folks. It is surprisingly day one of this 2022 spring practice for Jim Harbaugh's defending Big Ten champion Wolverines. And we are going to talk the top five storylines also and go through some of the uh, depth charts that uh, we're projecting heading in to day one of spring ball. If you missed it last week, I kind of missed it. It was kind of glossed over in a lot of other stuff in the uh, greater sports world. Uh, last year, you know, last week, you know, Super Bowl week, all this different stuff. Michigan spring practice starting today, and the spring game has been announced. It is April 2nd. It will be open to the public, and that will be at Michigan Stadium. The official time has not been announced. I'm guessing it'll be around 12, 1, 2 o'clock like it always is. Won't be anything under the lights, I wouldn't assume. And uh, it will be free to the public. So let's take a look at what we're going to expect here over the next six weeks from Jim, Jim, six weeks from Jim Harbaugh's program. They're going to do, they're going to spread it out a little more than they have in the past. Three practices per week. So three this week, starting today. And you know, they're going to be working five, six days a week, but they're just going to be doing individual stuff and working with the wait staff. Uh, they'll be off next week for Michigan's way too early spring break. And then they will return the week of Mar Monday, March 7th, four straight weeks. They will have three practices per week, all leading up to practice 15 there at Michigan Stadium, April 2nd, Saturday. Even though it's a spring game, it typically counts as one of the 15 practices that every single uh, you know D1 uh, FBS school gets every spring so those are what you need those are the items you need to know going into spring practice now let's take a look at the top storylines and where else can we start it is the quarterback battle the honestly the top storyline probably going into last spring practice as well other than well will Jim Harbaugh get fired coming off that two and four uh, season in 2020. So before we dive into this, I want to know from you guys, because there's been a lot of thoughts. I've seen people ask me questions and in the comments here on YouTube, social media, just chatting back and forth with Michigan fans, is when they'll actually announce the spring, uh, the, the starting quarterback for next season. So I want to know from you guys, when will Michigan officially announce the starting quarterback for next season? Go down and let me know in the comments. I actually think, whether you guys believe me or not, I think they might never do it, right? They might walk out there uh, on September 3rd and just have never announced it. And whoever walks out to take the snap, that's your starting quarterback. So I'm going to say never. Let me know when you guys think down below in the comments. Let's take a look at our depth chart heading into spring practice. You could have put QBA, QBB here, but Cade McNamara, the returning starter off a 12-2 team that went to the college football playoff, lost to Michigan State, lost to Georgia. He will be my starter, at least as of today, and at least until proven otherwise or told from my uh, spectacular sources inside the program that, hey, JJ's taking the staffs with, with the ones. I'm going to keep Cade McNamara there at my QB1. McCarthy, two. Alan Bowman. Uh, has a six-year left, is eligible this year. Not 100% sure if he will be on the team, but we've heard nothing to the contrary, so we're listing him as QB3. And then your two early enrollee freshmen, uh, Alex Orgy and Jalen Denegal, will be, I guess, QBs four and five. I don't want to really put them in any order uh, as of now. Although, if one of them has a good spring, I could see them uh, overtaking Bowman just because of the fact that Bowman doesn't uh, factor into the future of this program at the quarterback position. We'll even see if he's in the team or you know if he gets a scholarship pulled if Michigan needs it, considering is a six-year guy not uh, contributing in any form or fashion. But let me know what you guys think. Which of these two quarterbacks has more passing yards in the 2022 season? I think it's a good possibility that J.J. McCarthy could end up surpassing Cade McNamara in passing yards, but not be the starting quarterback at the beginning of the year. Maybe uh, he starts, you know, Cade starts the first four, five, six games. JJ keeps coming in, showing out better, showing out better, and they make the switch sometime, you know, middle of the season. He has a spectacular second half. So let me know down in the comments. Type Cade for Cade McNamara or JJ if you think it's going to be JJ McCarthy. More passing yards for this team in 2022. 
The big question right now that I'm looking into or just excited about for the spring into the fall is Matt Weiss. Now he's the co-offensive coordinator, the quarterback's coach. Which of these quarterbacks does he prefer? Um, I think last year was probably, you know, he's the quarterback's coach last year with, uh, you know, coached the offense along with Jim Harbaugh, Josh Gaddis, but Cade McNamara is his quarterback, and uh, he won him a Big Ten title. I've been hearing ever since kind of mid to late fall around the Ohio State game and after that Jim Harbaugh and Matt Weiss were favoring Cade McNamara, and not just last season, didn't really want to even put J.J. McCarthy in the games at the time, that Josh Gaddis was really the champion of J.J. McCarthy getting more snaps throughout 2021. Josh Gaddis is, uh, is now gone on to the, uh, you know, d- down to uh, the Miami Hurricanes. So if this is true, Harbaugh wants to stick with this guy, McNamara, who got him there. Matt Weiss also favors Cade McNamara. I think it would be a pretty good bet that, you know, barring J.J. McCarthy having just an out-of-this-world spring practice, that uh, Cade McNamara will enter fall camp as a number one QB and have to hold off J.J. until September 3rd opening game in Michigan Stadium. As I mentioned at the top of the show, we are presented by Manscaped. They gave us the promo code GOBLUE, no spaces, G-O-B-L-U-E. Head over to manscaped.com, use that promo code, you get 20% off and free shipping. And on your entire order, folks, they just launched the Ultimate Premium Collection. It is basically, Manscaped has put, positioning themselves as the only place you need to go for all your male grooming needs. Look at this, I got Manscaped lip balm. It's awesome. I'm a big lip balm guy. Chapstick galore on my lips at all time. Look, they got body wash. They got shampoo and conditioner. And it's not one of these squeezy bottles like your wife or girlfriend have. These are manly bottles, right? These are like nearly steel, it feels like. They've got all kinds of awesome products. It is the Ultimate Premium Collection from Manscaped. Very affordable, and even more so when you use that 20% off uh, promo code Go Blue, and which also gets you free shipping. Support our sponsors, support yourself. Make sure you're getting groomed. The ladies in your life, or guys, they will love it. Manscaped.com promo code Go Blue. How about the offensive line, where Michigan is return, you know, replacing two starters, have three guys returning from last year who were part of the starting lineup, and have. I think people are uh, discounting how good this guy potentially could be. They've got Olu Oluwatimi, who was a, a Remington Award finalist for the best center in the country, a third-team All-American by a few publications. He might be one of the top five transfers in the entire cycle. There's obviously a couple bigger name guys, some quarterbacks out there, but I really like what he brings to the table. Now, you've got uh, three starters. You've got Ryan Hayes, of course, starting as well. Trevor Keegan on the left side, left tackle, left guard. And then Zach Zinter, who uh, started for a little bit in 2020, the entire 2021 season, entering his third year with the program uh, as your starting right guard. Carson Barnhart, can he hold off Trent A. Jones uh, at the right tackle spot, I think is the, the battle to watch, but maybe the only battle because Olu uh, factors in there at center. I think he's going to be the uh, the starter no matter what happens. I don't think Michigan has anyone there ready to take over. Great move for them by getting him. Trent A. Jones played as like the sixth offensive lineman when Michigan put six O linemen in the game throughout 2021. So he'll be your main back up at both right tackle and at left tackle. Keep an eye out for Reese Atterbury entering his third year. Uh, back up at the guards. Also Giovanni El Hadi uh, and Greg Crip in there as a backup at center. Number three on my top storylines is the secondary where Michigan has to replace three starters depending on who you consider a starter. Obviously uh, Daxon Hill is gone and uh, and who else do we lose? Uh, Vincent Gray and I'm just losing my train of thought here. Brad Hawkins right so as the three starters but you've got a couple of guys in DJ Turner who emerged mid-year and Rod uh, Moore who emerged mer- mid-year uh, as potential re- you know, returning starters. You didn't start the entire season, but will be considered returning starter this year. But we have a new addition to the secondary. Mike Sainerstall was in the rotation. Uh, got, I think, the third most snaps last year of all wide receivers at the wide receiver position. He is switching from wide receiver to defensive back, at least for spring. If it doesn't work out, he's not getting any playing time, maybe he would move back uh, to the wide receiver in fall. But what Michigan is uh, approaching this as, Mike Sanderson has two years left uh, of eligibility, and Michigan has many as seven receivers they feel can get significant playing time this year. A lot more ability to get playing time, at least uh, for a top-level player in the secondary versus wide receivers. So Sanderson is going to give that a shot in spring practice. Here's my depth chart as of today of this Michigan football secondary. Uh, DJ Turner, Rod Moore, both are returning starters. Rod Moore took over with uh, four, five, six games left in the year as a true freshman. R.J. Moden there, he started some games early on. Now he's going to move over kind of from free safety or roaming safety to uh, strong safety. I'm putting Will Green in the Daxton Hill spot right now at nickel. And G-Mon, oh yeah, Will, I was say Will, yeah, Will Johnson at the nickel. G-Mon Green 
uh, was a starter to start last year, got passed over by DJ Turner. He was, he's returning for his fifth year. He will be a starter, at least in the spring, at cornerback. Jaden McBurrows, Makari Page, Mike Sanistral, and Jordan Morant are my backups in this uh, in this setup. But I think the secondary overall is a big time uh, is a big time uh, focus of. of, of you know, a lot of focus will be on that position for a number of reasons. One, biggest recruit Michigan's had in a number of years in Will Johnson. People are super excited about him. And then number two is there are a lot of available you know, available positions for playing times. Guys and names you know, like Mike Sanderstone, Makari Page, R.J. Morton, Jordan Morant, who have been in this program for a few years and uh, have yet to make their mark as a long-term uh, starter. Morton had his opportunity, lost it last year. We'll see if he can hold on to it here in 2022. As I mentioned at the top of the show, folks, I wish that I could get every single Michigan football fan in the world to subscribe to the channel, but I can't. But at least I've got your attention. So if you haven't yet, go ahead, hit subscribe. <clears throat> We're going to put out the most content of any Michigan football podcast or uh, video show in the world this spring, guaranteed. Let's get to 20,000 subscribers ASAP. We need 588 more. It's YouTube.com slash Michigan TV. Number four, there has been some significant move on the coaching staff, which I'm sure is uh, no surprise to those, those of you who followed along over the last month, month and a half. But let's take a look at the changes on the coaching staff. Now, these are new names. They just changed what their role is, right? Sharon Moore is the co-OC, and in some ways he's considered the lead OC, also will uh, coach the offensive line in 2022. Matt Weiss, quarterback's coach, and has been elevated to co-OC. Jim Harbaugh, contrary to what I think most people thought when we told you a week or so ago, is that they will both uh, coach, you know, call plays, Weiss and Moore, which was uh, different than what we originally anticipated of Moore being the primary play caller. Jesse Minter, coming up from Vanderbilt, defensive coordinator, and Steve Klingscale has been uh, elevated. He will coach your cornerbacks and be your co-defensive coordinator. Ron Bellamy moving over from safeties to wide receivers coach, which was undercoached by Josh Gass the last few years. It was the position he co was hired in for. Uh, had to switch switch things around when there's some coaching staff upheaval, upheaval last spring. And so he will be your wide receivers coach. Grant Newsom getting his first shot as your tight ends coach. Mike Elston coming up from Notre Dame, longtime defensive line coach, one of the best in the game. And he will be your recruiting coordinator, which is a change from what Michigan's done really over about the last 20 seasons or so. Jay Harbaugh remains a special teams coach and will take on defensive battles for the first time in his career. He is uh, backfilling Ron Bellamy, and he is your new safeties coach as well. It's tough to give that coaching staff last year anything but an A-plus grade. Jim Harbaugh made all kinds of moves following the 2020 disastrous season, replacing Don Brown, replacing a few other guys. Didn't have to make as many replacements, but is replacing both coordinators and uh, is replacing Sean Nua, who is a highly rated recruiter, with uh, probably even a better coach in Mike Elston. So last year's coaching staff, A-plus. This one's to be determined, but I'm pretty excited about it. Excited to see what they have. There's a lot of continuity going into year two of this core group uh, coming off a Big Ten championship. And my number five storyline for spring football is what is the vibe in the coaching staff, uh, you know, meeting rooms, the locker room, on the field. This is, felt like a program that had everything come together in 2021. Everywhere, there was leaders in the coaching staff. There were mission guys in the coaching staff. There were uh, seniors and, and fourth-year players who were leaders in the locker room and on the field. A lot of those guys are gone, and there was drama in the coaching staff, drama with Jim Harbaugh. I think this Harbaugh NFL drama is something we really need to keep an eye out for. Right? Will there be guys who are just salty that, hey, Jim Harbaugh misled me, both coaches like Josh Gass maybe, and players, will they leave the program after spring? It happens every single year where we see guys we didn't expect, potentially starters, leave the program. And will this coaching staff mesh, right? Because they might have thought that their boss, Jim Harbaugh, was one foot out the door. Maybe he wasn't taking him with him. I'm pretty interested to see how things shake out this spring and into the fall. I think Jim Harbaugh, though, he needs to win back the locker room. All right? I think it would be, if he hasn't done it yet, in the two weeks or so since he came back uh, from his trip to Minnesota, sit down every single guy on the roster, all 85-plus of them, and every single coach and just say, hey, Here's the deal, right? Don't tell them as a group. Tell them individually, right? It might take you a couple days. But uh, here's the deal. Here's why I looked at it. I'm back here. I'm not going anywhere. And here's what I think how you can contribute to this program, both near term and long term. You do that. Look every guy in the eye. I think Jim Harbaugh and this Michigan football program will be just fine. All right, we're going to have more uh, you know, videos here in the coming days. Any news we get coming out of spring practice about any position changes or guys taking snaps, the one that we weren't expecting, we'll jump on and do another video. But probably see you back either late Tuesday or Wednesday. Until then, go Blue.